Greetings Adventures, Frost here, and today I want to share with you the BRD farm that I've been doing for my warrior. So I kill Arena to go for SGC. I was killing Angerforge to try and get Hodge, which I got last night, and I have also killed Houndmaster to get Black Veil Cape, and there is an AoE poll that you can do to also farm XP. Now, for the XP pool, I'm not exactly sure what's the most like you can get doing this in an hour because I've only ever done it with just my warrior in the party. But the pool can get you up to like 7 or 8k in just that pool, and that's not counting all the other stuff that you're killing um, during the instance because you're also getting XP during the arena and you're getting XP during Anger Forge and all these, all the different, like every mob you kill, you'll get XP for, and it's quite a lot because they're all elites. Um, so my warrior started out at 52 when I first started doing this um, to farm him SGC and he is now level 54 and 35%. He also has some XP from AV quests and AV, but not really much else. Now when I'm doing this, I do normally set it to master loop because elemental fires... Uh, drop off the fire guys and you want to be able to loot those now I know elemental fires are common but there is a way to set your master loot to common um, so this macro right here will set your master loot to common and you just replace this with your character's name now I'll just park my warrior here for now against this wall because this is a spot where he will be in range to be able to loot Anger Forge, and he'll be good there until the only spot, only time he's not okay to be there is for the AOE pull. We'll have to move him for that. But you'll just want to clear that fire guard over there and this fire guard right here. Now, this run, you cannot do all these different things in 12 minutes, right? You kind of have to pick. So, like, the main thing I've been focusing on for my warrior is I make sure I do arena every time. Which, to do arena, you simply run into here. You walk on top of here. That will proc the dialogue. As you can see here, procs the dialogue. He yells, which means the event has started. Now, if these dogs are walking here, I just tend to wait for them to go by. We'll come back across. Because you have to have Blink to get past these guys. And if you do pull them, you can kill them. But you have to be like full health and mana. And they are a bit of a pain to kill. So you just Blink past them. And for the spec for this, um, when you're killing Arena and Anger Forge, it's ideal to be like deep fire. Like you want to be super deep fire, combustion, and everything, just to do like max DPS, right? Like basically PvE fire spec would be best for Arena and Anger Forge. Um, but then I just went Master of Elements spec because I'll yeah, I'll kill these things slightly slower, but now I can do AoE farming, right? So I can do the AoE pull to farm XP. So now that I have Hodge and that I have Houndmaster Cape, I don't need to do um I don't need to do those anymore, so now I just do the AoE farm, right? So now Master of Elements is fine. Now, I like to bring both of them up at the same time, because if you bring only one up at the same time and you don't kill them fast enough, the next ones can actually despawn uh, and you lose the arena event. So I just pull all six or both packs at the same time. If you sometimes you have to like walk across. So that's why I walked all the way over to the other side is because the second pack won't come out until you get like closer to the door. And then you come over here, you jump from here to here and you'll get like stuck on an invisible ledge and then you jump up one more time. And now these mobs need to path all the way around this entire ring. And this just gives you free time to sit here in DPS. Now there's multiple different kinds of packs. There's two packs that are um, actually difficult and one of them are the spiders so as you can see they net so you have to make sure that you keep enough mana to be able to blink otherwise you can get stuck 
getting hit by them and they actually do do a lot of damage so you don't want to get uh, hit by them a lot and you just kind of do this dance with them bringing them back and forth make sure you don't pull one of the mobs at the bottom if you're using tab targeting can be a bit of a pain so then I'm just going to go and drop there so I don't have to use a blink to get rid of the web. And the spiders are one of the tankier ones, so they do... It will cost a little bit more mana to kill compared to any of the other spawns. The only other real difficult one... See, so here they webbed me midair. Super annoying. I have to blink to get out of it and see I took like a, a significant amount of damage there. So these can be dangerous. Um, the other ones, the bats that can silence can be kind of dangerous. However, they're really not that bad because they only have about 2K health. So they're super squishy. And um, the silence doesn't prevent you from doing this jump, right? So like, even though you're silenced, you can still just jump up and it's not a problem and they won't hit you. And then you can just wait out the 10 second silence if you don't have ice block. So that was lucky that I got that jump off right before that net. Evo here. And this is the same spot where you will kill the boss if Gorosh is to spawn. spider we should be fine and then you come up here and now you pray that you get Gorosh I don't really kill any of the other bosses if you do need them then you can kill any of the bosses um, there's one with the magic shield the werewolf one that you just have to wait for the magic shield to fall off because of the ledge you can really you don't have to worry about dying to anything. You can just keep jumping up back and forth, back and forth, waiting for bandage or whatever. And that's not what you want to see. But if it was to be Gorosh, then you pull him and then you kill him the exact same way you're killing the spiders. And Gorosh is actually a lot easier to kill than um, the other packs or the other, like the trash packs. So now for Anger Forge, we're going to hit this. I know you don't have to hit this, but if you don't hit this, you don't have a very clean way back. So now I accidentally pulled that, but that's okay. There's a reset here that I will show you. I said it's okay to pull whatever, as long as you don't die. You don't have to make it that far. And then you run and jump out this window. Now stuff will reset. This can be a good time to like make bandages or whatever. And then you're gonna wanna angle yourself towards this wall, run up and just start spam jumping is the most consistent way I've found to do it. I'm sure there's a spot where you can like actually just normally jump and time your jump properly, but spam jumping always has worked for me pretty well. And then you just run off, jump into here and that's how you can skip that door too. There will be like an invisible pathway. You just do, do the jump the exact same way. And then now here, you're gonna need invis pots. So every single time you do anger forge, you're gonna have to use an invis pot. That is a downfall to having to do this. I've tried to be able to just blink past that group. It's not possible. You have to use an invis pot, sadly. So now you're gonna go against this wall. Get your buffs ready, and now you're going to wait for this fire guard to patrol wherever he is. We got lucky with his patrols right here, and he was very close, but you definitely want to kill this guy first because he can cause problems if you pull him while killing this pack. And this guy does a lot of damage. Fire ward does help against him. All 
All right. Okay, so the Dragoons are ranged and the Marshals heal. Doesn't really matter the order, but if they're ranged, you're gonna wanna use this ledge to LOS to bring them closer so you don't have to worry about them running away in fear. And also make sure you get a slow on them when they're starting to get low on health so that they don't pull anything. Cause that is how you will wipe here is by accidentally having these things run away and pull something. 100%. So now for the ranged one, just barely go around this ledge, come closer. Now you don't have to worry about him running away in fear. And now for Anger Forge, we're gonna be using a similar ledge that we were using before. Same jump, opposite side. You're gonna need to get full mana and health again. So now that I have full mana, we're going to go ahead and cast a frost bolt on this fire guard destroyer right here. Cast a couple into him. And then now we got double dragoon. So one definitely needs to get polyed. I always poly one of them, just because why not? And then we're going to go ahead and kill the other dragoon. All the fire elemental runs around in a circle. When the fire ele gets close, jump off. Then come back and do the jump again. Kill the fire guard next. And finish off the marshal or the dragoon. Because they can't spawn as marshals, they can spawn as dragoons. It's not really a big deal either way. It's no problem. Go ahead and use. Oh. Eh. Don't really want to use a mana gem, then I have to make another one. Now we will get full mana for Anger Forge. Now, for Anger Forge, you're going to want to have a lot of burst, so I use Mind Quickening Gem, and it's much nicer. To, this is where it's very nice to be deep um, fire because having combustion. Uh, blast wave critical mass it increases your fire damage a lot firepower but luckily I, I have good gear so that can carry me um with just the master of elements spec and you'll see why it's a dps race because at the end you need to do 40 percent of his health very very quickly now we're gonna start out with one of the reservists i just go and fireball one just so that it one-shots them and then scorch another one. If it crits, then I target a third one because that will kill it and that one crit too, so that's nice. Ooh. Anger Forge hits hard, so you don't want to get hit by him a lot, ideally. Finish off the last one and then now we're just looking at Anger Forge. So I start out by stacking up five Scorches on him. And I only have two out of three Scorch, so it can take some time. And once I get that, throw some Fireballs into him, but I don't want to get him too low. Set up the kill. low enough throw a scorch into him jump back up that was lame now he procs at about 40 and a half percent so i don't want him to go around yet so we're gonna come back over here throw another scorch into him 
we're gonna throw one last scorch into him and cast a fireball off that right when he's right around right here he's at 44 percent now see off that fireball these proc so now we have to kill him before those make it to him because there's healers and everything so when he gets into range mqg pop all your cooldowns whatever you have and then you're just going to spam fireballs into him ideally i want to have an ice barrier up here but i don't and then fire blast mana gem and then when you he, he's going to run back into him so now this isn't ideal now they're all they all aggroed onto me because i didn't kill him before they made it to him but what you can do is first aid when they're running at you over here and now you're gonna go ahead and jump jump up again and you come over here loot it give it to whichever yourself if you're selling it to someone your own alt whatever then you're gonna come back over here and you're going to make a run for it crossing over this pack keep shielding now this one you're going to cone and blink past and then you're going to use the same reset now if you forgot to hit the thing and you did it without opening this door you can jump out the window on the other side of the hallway over there um, to this side or to that side preferably to that side just make sure you don't pull the pack that's inside the corner right there so now they reset you can do the jump and you want to get yourself right into this doorway right here blink shouldn't pull anything hug this wall Okay, we pulled that. So now what we're going to have to do is reset the instance because we pulled that, but it's not really a big time loss because of where we're at. So now normally, like you would not do all of these in one run, right? If you're specifically trying to get like SGC and you're doing other things while you're doing it, but I'm just, for the sake of you guys knowing how to do everything, I'm going to do all the different things. So once I reset here, we'll go kill Houndmaster, and then we will do an AoE pull to finish it off. Oh yeah, and then also, going back to the arena run, when you're running out, when you first proc the arena and you're re and you're running back to the above the arena, you can actually uh, reset. You can run out of the instance and come back in if you accidentally pull the two guards over there, and the arena will not be started yet because you have enough time to do that. So worst case, if you do pull those mobs and you don't have enough mana and health to kill them, just run out of the instance and restart. So now. For this, move the warrior a little bit closer to where he's going to be. Right here should be fine. So just from over there to over here. And we're, I'm going to show you Houndmaster. Houndmaster is not the most popular boss, but it's a not bad um, pre biz cape for like warriors and rogues. So it can be worth getting. Black Veil Cape, 14 agility, 6 strength. Pretty nice. Um, other stuff isn't really that good, but... It's a very easy boss to solo too, so. Now you're just gonna run over here and he is below the arena. Fine, run through all that. Okay, so now that we have full mana and health, now you can pull these dogs packs one at a time to make it easier, but it's really not that hard to just do them both. So you just pull them both, ice block, get them all on one side of you, pop out, nova them, get a fresh barrier, wait for about three seconds, hit the flame strike, and Kona cold. 
and the dogs will go down very easily. UAEs, and then you're just left with Houndmaster. And then you get your chance at a cloak, and it won't kill, take you many kills to get the cloak. It's only like a 40% drop chance. Not that time, but as you can see, I can loot it to my warrior from here. Easy. And then now we have one pull left. So the warrior for the AoE pull has to be moved over to here at the starting area. So that's where we'll be killing them. We don't want him to be in range of the mobs when we run past them. So if he's right here, then when we ice block, the mobs would aggro onto the warrior, which you do not want. So now it's nice to kill this fire lord. You can kill a fire lord while it's inside the pool. You'll resist most of the things, you just have to use like a fire ward, but it makes it harder. So we're just gonna go ahead and take it out real quick. Because it's not worth risking the death. Uh, the death run for BRD is very, very long. So really try not to die. So now I like to just put my warrior right up on these boxes. It's not a safe spot or anything. You will still get killed, but it's just a nice little area that's away from everything. He's not going to, the mobs won't be frost nova next to him or anything. So won't be an issue. Okay. Now that we're ready to go with full health and mana, let's check it. We have 69,000 XP on the warrior. So now we can see just about how much XP we get from this pull. I start out with a rank one blizzard and I just have it hit both packs just so it hits them once. And then I immediately start running over here. I will fire blast this backpack and then run to this edge and wand that pack. And I'll target the backpack CS AE to get those two and then blink out the door. Then I will turn around and cone the ones in the front with a rank one cone just to slow them down a little bit. Make them uh, not catch up to me. Then link over here so that we can pull these two guys right here. Fire blast. And we'll go ahead and block right before they make it to us. We have a fresh barrier up. And go ahead and cancel the block. Ross Nova. Get a fresh barrier. About three seconds, we're going to hit a flame strike. And then spam the cone out of that. Back pedal out so it doesn't trigger leeway. And then now we're just waiting for cone. We need to hit cone on cooldown. We want to make sure we hit all of them with it. Now, once there's about five seconds on your cone cooldown, you can hit him with a fresh frost nova. And then this time I'm going to go and toe up it. And same thing, flame strike with about three seconds left. Back pedal out of it. And then now, since they're getting pretty close, so because they're starting to run away in fear, we're going to go ahead and Cold Snap Nova. We're going to do another combo. So that we can finish him off. And then we're just going to finish him off with AE. And I also hit a Mana Gem in there. If you didn't notice. Because I didn't quite have enough mana for my cone after the Flame Strike. And then you just finish him off with Wands or whatever. You still have Evo. And then we end up with... 6,000 XP from that pull. And that's with only my warrior in here. So we would get a higher amount had we uh, had more low levels in here. But that's a nice little like free quest of XP worth, right? That's better than hitting dungeon lockout if you have everything except for your SGC. So I do like one or, or like two or three of these per uh, lockout, basically. And they also give a bunch of rune cloth, a bunch of greens. Um, you have the chance at really good drops. So you can make some decent money here. It's not great money. It's by no means the best money, by no means the best XP. But it's better than nothing while you're farming your SGC for your warrior, if that's what you're doing. And look at that. There's a Traveler's Backpack. It's like, that's like 30 gold right now because Mooncloth are up in price because of ZG, right? 
But anyways, guys, I hope this helps you guys farm your SGC, your Hodge, some XP from BRD, whatever it is you want to do. And also, don't forget, other, any, pretty much any caster, any range class can actually do the uh, arena runs. And then the Anger Forge runs, Warlocks could do. You have to have enough burst. I'm not sure if a Shadow Priest could do it. But yeah, give it a shot. Most casters are going to be able to do these pulls, not this pull. Obviously, but even Houndmaster, I think most casters would be able to do if you do the dogs one pack at a time. Thank you, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you all on Azeroth.